our anchor scripture for the year 2024, anchor scripture for year 2024 is in Daniel 11, 32. That's our anchor scripture for year 2024. And that scripture says, as such as do wicked, wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupted by flattering. Our focus here is on the second part. It says, but the people that do know their God shall be strong. Shall be what? Strong. And do exploits. See, it was when I was going through the scripture, something struck me again. Because the month of, of December in the new house is what? I mean, for those that are thinking for the month of December. At least one person should be able to tell me, I think for the month of December. Glory to God. Let someone shout glory to God. Let someone give me the theme for December. Finishing, I will have fainted. Shout it one more time. Someone, you will finish this year very strong. You finish what? So this month, our theme is finishing strong. strong. Shout it, shout it one more time. Finishing strong. Is that what for you? Yes. Say, I'm finishing strong. strong. And the theme for 2024 is doing what? Right. And this scripture tells us that God and says to us that they, those that do know their God, they shall be what? And what will happen to them? So we're crossing over from strength to exploits. Amen? One of the ways to, to do exploits, because it, it gives the word exploits. There's an S there. So, and you and I understand to do one exploit ah, is a lot, it is a lot that takes one exploit. So to do two or three, to do exploit in multiple, it requires speed. Hallelujah. God will do some things in our lives that only God himself can do it. Because it will happen with the speed of lightning. Someone, speed is coming your way. Amen. I say speed is coming your way. Amen. There are four things I know that activate speed. One of them is the hand of God. The hand of God. That was why when Elijah was praying on the mountain, he told Ahab to go running. I mean, on normal things, he was running on, on, on Chiro, so he was getting a force, but there was a clause there, the hand of God. The hand of God. It doesn't matter who has gone ahead of you. It doesn't matter who has overtaken you. It doesn't matter who, has, who started first. When the hand of God rests upon you, overtake them. The hand of God is the power of speed. I'm saying one more time to, for someone today, speed is coming your way. Amen. I said, I said, speed is coming your way. Amen. The next thing I also know that brings speed is revelation. There are things that God will unveil to you in the world. You will jump three steps ahead because God opens your eyes to possibilities. And that's why when you come to God's house, open your heart for insights. Let the floodgate of his wisdom, of his knowledge hit you. It will cost you, it will cost you to leap on and get to the mountaintop. Another one that I know is the anointing. Hallelujah. The anointing. When the anointing comes upon a life, it jump protocol. That was why David was ordained to be king. But he had to be anointed to experience the speed. The process for him to stand before the king would have been a long time. But the oil stated an event that broke, broke protocols. A man that went to serve his brother suddenly, a few seconds, was standing before the, most, the strongest man in the land. How does that happen? If someone tells you that before the end of this year that you'll be having a dinner with the president of Nigeria, you say it's a lie. But the anointing of God can orchestrate movements. Some things can happen. 
beyond human understanding and you find yourself standing before him. That's what God does. Protocols break. And I think that I know that also activates speed is prayers. When men pray, things move fast. When men do what? Pray. Things will do what? And I'm believing God that between now and the crossover, that these three stages will capture them day. Amen. Shout overflow. overflow. Shout one more time. Overflow. One more time. Overflow. So one of the ones that I will start with is to try and look at some revelations to prepare our mind because we're going to pray at the crossover. And whilst we're praying, it will be important for us to have some insights, some things we want to pray about, some light wants to shine to us. And um, the one I'll give to us, when I was in um, School of Disciples, there's a class that we that, that were taught. talks about the things you should pay focus to, that you must know. Number one, they said you must know God. Then you must know man. Then we were told that you must know the enemy. And many times when, they, when you're told to study about the enemy, that they're very important, our focus is the devil. But this morning, I want to change some perspective. Can I do that? Yes. Are we ready? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. The year is not over yet. Hallelujah. So there's still a lot of possibilities that will take place. Hallelujah. Amen. Still more revelations to flow. Let's go to Genesis 1.28. I want to do someone in the equation that will displace an order. It will help us to pray because 2024 is a great year for all of us. Amen. It says, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. I think, let's, let's all read it together. Is it on the screen? One, two, three, go. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Let's shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This scripture is one of the first instructions God gave to man when man was created. And many times I read the scripture, but why did God see that it was important that he laid these principles and precepts to man, a new arrival to the earth? Why did he break this down, gave them that initial assignment? But the first one I want to first look at is that he said, God blessed them. God said to them, he said they should have dominion. They should be fruitful. Multiply, replenish. All he was talking about was talking about what? The earth. Replenish the earth and what? Subdue it. Are you with me? He's saying to you, be fruitful where? Where? Respond to me. Fruitful where? Replenish where? Subdue where? So I discussed something that it was focused on the earth. Every instruction was given to man was earth instruction. It was not heaven instruction. It was what? Earth instruction. And he said one thing that was profound. He says, subdue it. And let me just give you an, um, a pure English translation of to subdue. It will open our eyes to something. To subdue means to overcome, to quieten, or bring under control a feeling or a person. I'll say it again. To subdue means to overcome, to quieten, or bring under control a feeling or a person. To bring a country or a people under control by force means to subdue them. 
to conquer or defeat. When I saw this and I understood that subdue was a word, an attribute not to a thing, but to what? A person. Because to subdue is to quieten other emotion or who? A person. So when God used the word to the earth, subdue the earth, he wasn't talking of a non-living thing. The earth in the sight of God is a living entity. Or else you, you could not have used the word subdue. You don't subdue a non-living thing. You can only subdue someone, something that has a feeling or has existence of a being. So it threw something to me that the earth is not just stone, mountain, and sand. In the sight of God, number one knowledge that God gave to us is that the earth is a living being. The earth is what? So when God, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, and God created the heavens and what? The earth. I said it before that the word created means bara, which means to come out of something. The first act we saw in scriptures was that God brought forth something out of himself. And God is a living being. So the only thing that can come out of God must be likened to him. The living cannot bring the dead. The living brings the living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. A lion can only bring forth another lion. Cannot bring forth a goat. So you bring forth your image and your likeness. So when God says in the beginning, and God created the heavens and the earth, it means in the order of existence on earth, on this dimension we have, is God, the heavens, and the earth. All living beings. All what? In existence, the first creation that came out of God was the heaven. A living being. The earth came out of him. A living being. The earth has life. The earth can hear. The earth can speak. The earth can move. It took science a long time to discover that the earth you stand on is not stagnant. It's always in motion. Why? It is a living being. The earth does what? It moves. The earth in scriptures can be grieved. The earth can change its mind. The earth can help. The earth can disagree. The earth can work in your favor. The earth can work against you. The earth has a will of itself. I discovered that when God told man that the first person you need to face and contend with is not the devil, is the earth. I'm here to announce to you that the earth is more powerful than the devil. In short, let me explain something to you. The earth is older and superior to the, to the devil. Because when the earth was formed, there was no devil. There was no Satan. Oh, Satan is an angel created after the heavens were done, was created. Angels came and all the creations, the elders, all the elements and existed in heaven came after he created the heavens. Then he began to create those ones inside. Which means that the earth is older than Satan. Am I seeing someone here? Yeah. So is there anything you need to understand and to know to excel on this earth? He said, be fruitful. Multiply here on this earth. You must understand the earth. You must understand the... Tell your neighbor, say, understand the earth. Understand the earth. Say it one more time. Understand the earth. Oh, say it one more time. Understand the earth. For those that understand the earth, they are the ones that prevail. 
and experience exploits. But one thing I also want to let you understand is that Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to that 28, 29, is God giving mankind full expo on how the earth is to run. Everything there was specific. There was nothing God did in that, in that first chapter that didn't have a deep insight. And one of the things that God made to happen was to first to show us who the earth is. Let's read Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. I'll show you something there. It says, and the earth was without what form. And the earth was what? And then it was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Let's, the first, let's read the first, the first line together. Let, let's, read, let's do that one together. One, three, go. And the earth was without and void. Let's stop there. The earth was without form and what? Void. This place had always been and always been a mystery to me. Because before now, my understanding, before now, my understanding was that, and I've read it in some other books, Christian books and theological books, was that when God created the heaven and the earth, that there were some years, centuries after, that was all recorded. That was what I was told. And I, that the event of chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, was a, a large distance. So, and I, the record was not after... Some people say something that happened on the earth, the earth had destroyed, then the Bible record that one, all that, and got to verse 2. And I say that something happened, the devil came, destroyed the heaven and the earth, destroyed the earth. But when I discovered that, between Genesis chapter, verse 1 and 2, there was no devil. There was no devil. Satan had not been in existence. So what happened? To make the earth without form. What happened to make the earth void? Between Genesis 1 and 2, understand that there was no devil. There was nothing. I'll show you, some, I'll show you a scripture. So we can, we, can, we, we can grab it very well. In Genesis 1, 11, Genesis 1, 11, it says, this is just to show you what, first of all, to show you, the, you know, everything God creates has a purpose. So the earth has what? A purpose. In Genesis 1, 11, it says, And God said, Let the earth what? Bring forth what? Grass. The herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind. Whose seed is in itself upon the earth? And it was so. Let's read verse 24. The same Genesis 1, 24. It says, and God, 24. Media, 24. And God said, let the earth do what? Bring forth the living creature after its kind. Cattle and creeping things, the beasts of the earth, after its kind. And it was so. Number one purpose of the earth is to bring forth. To do what? Shall bring forth. She said one more time. That was why the first thing God spoke to the earth and commanded it was that earth bring forth. Not one thing. Everything God wanted was already in the earth. It was just for the earth to bring it forth. There was nothing God needed that was not in the earth already. All he did was to speak to it. Grass, come out. Grass came out. I wish someone could understand, that, understand this. That the power of the earth for you is that the earth is to produce. Whatever God needed, he demanded the earth to bring it out. And as I said earlier, that Genesis chapter 1 is God giving man the pattern of rulership. Pattern of existence on the earth. Which is the first principle God wants you to know is that whatever you want to happen for you on the earth, you must speak it. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes, sir. 
The whole reason of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, was just for one thing, to teach man a lesson. Man a lesson. The lesson number one is, the earth will not respond until you speak to it. The earth will not give you what you deserve or what you expect. It will give you what you demand for. So, God showed us one lesson. He created the earth. The earth has the ability to bring forth. The earth was made to bring forth. But he's, he left it and said nothing. And verse 2 so, showed us that the earth did not do anything. The earth did not bring forth anything. The earth was void. Even though he had grass in it. He had everything God wanted. He did not bring it to God of his own will. What God demanded. Until God spoke, nothing came out. God gave us verse 1 to 2 to teach us that if you don't speak, you will not have anything. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that it wasn't meant to be. It didn't mean that it didn't meant to be for you, but you don't demand for it. If you refuse to demand, you will not have it. God went man to know. Take what you want. Take it. It's yours already. There's nothing that can come to your mind as an idea that the earth doesn't have capacity to, to fulfill in your life. There's nothing. There's no mountain you want to climb that the, that the earth doesn't have the mountain for you to stand upon. There's, no, there's nothing you want to wear that the earth doesn't have it provided somewhere. There's no house you want to live in that the earth doesn't have it existed somewhere. There's no car you want to ride that the earth doesn't have for you somewhere. There's nothing you want to dream about or aspire for, dear to want, that is not in the capacity of the earth to give to you. So say, demand for it. Tell they say, bring forth. Say, bring forth. Shall bring forth. See, I'm giving you this insight because in the night, we'll be demanding things for 2024. You, you, you need to understand why we're saying this. You, you, we want to demand. And you need to understand why you must demand. If you don't demand, you will not have it. It's not good to enough to wish or to expect or to, it, it should happen. No, no, no. No. Many people have waited and waited eternity until you rise up and demand. Earth bring forth. The earth that is created to bring forth did nothing. The earth was void. God left it. Let me see if you, you, you perform. You didn't do anything. Until God came and screamed on it. Let there be light. And, there was, and he began to command the things. Grass come forth. Fruit come forth. And immediately he was responding. He was responding. Responding. If you leave if you leave the earth alone, it will rebel. See, the first rebellion was not the Satan. I'm here to announce to you. Mark it. The first rebellion to God was the earth. It was the earth. That was why when God made man, he told the man, there's nothing, no one you should look after or face. It's not, any, no, not another man. Not the devil. It's what? The earth. That's why he gave him an assignment. He said, subdue the earth. Make sure you force it to do what you want him to do. Make sure you subdue. See, why? Remember, subdue is for a thing that has a feeling. Which means the earth can choose to want to do its own. Say, no, not your own. It's my own. Are you, are you with me? Say, it's about what the earth feels. It's about what you demand. Tell your neighbor, say demand. demand. Say it one more time. Demand. Say it one more time. Demand. Say demand. demand. The next thing I want you to also understand is that same, I think that's Genesis 1. Let's read from the 11 and 12 together. 11 and 12 together. 11 to 12. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. Herb yielding seed and fruit tree yielding after its kind, whose seed is in itself and, 
and it was so. Let's wait. The next verse. Wait, 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 wait. Before, before we read the next verse. Remember, we're trying to show you that the reason why Genesis 1 and 2 was significant, and the reason why the words that God used in verse, one, in verse 2 was very, very, is so insightful. He says, and the earth was without form and void, right? Without form and void. Without form means that it had no order. There was no word structure. Everything was anyhow. That's what it means. And it was void. I thought I explained to you that the earth's nature, ability is to bring forth. So it doesn't make sense for someone that is supposed to bring forth to choose not to do anything. But that's what is in his nature. So God has a reason. The next thing was that it was without form. It was confused. Everything was no, no structure. That's what they saw. But let me show you something. Let's read verse 2 of Genesis 1, verse 12. Genesis 1, 12. It says, And the earth did what? Bring forth what? And what? And what? Wait. Let's read 11 again. Read 11 again. And God said, let the earth bring forth what? Grass. See, God gave instructions in a pattern. He asked for grass first. He asked for herb yielding seed first. He asked for fruit, tree yielding fruit. When the earth was to respond, the earth brought forth what? Grass first. Gave him what? The herb yielding two seed second. Gave him the fruit tree yielding third. He followed the pattern of the instructions. Which means the earth in nature is structured. Are you with me? Which means the earth can hear and understand precepts. So how does the earth that is able to respond in a structural manner refuse by himself to make the world structured? Am I speaking to someone here? See, it's different when they ask you what you don't have. But it's a problem when you have the ability to do it and you refuse to do it. In nature, in ability, the earth is structured. But when God came back and looked at it, it was anyhow. God was giving man a, a lesson. Never allow the earth to take you by himself. It will take you nowhere. You must be the pilot of the earth. They ask you, what do you want to happen in 2024? Well, I don't know. What are you expecting? What career do you want to follow? I'm still thinking about it. At what age do you want to marry? Well, when the man comes. See, the moment you leave your destiny and your decisions of your life in the hand of the earth, you're in trouble. You hear what? God taught man early. Never allow anything to be for chance. How you want things to go, you must speak it. Your children, you must speak on them. You will marry early. Amen. Are you with me? Your marriage will not fail. Amen. See, you will prosper. Amen. Ah. Never allow things to just take you by surprise. That's the lesson God was giving to man. So I call Genesis 1, 28, the, the coronation service of, of man. Why? Because from Genesis 1 to there, God was the one calling the shots, showing how things have been done, calling things that were happening. And, but when he got to 28, he had created man, and he was about to hand over governance. Are you with me? See, in Genesis 1, he was the one governing the earth, not man. He was not saying, okay, let this be here, moon here, day, night. He was the one running things. And he was showing how he runs it. But when he goes to 28, he was about to hand over power. So when he was to hand over power, he told the man, I'm no longer in control. It will not be you that will be in control. 
And that's why you see, if you look through scriptures from Genesis 128, there was no single place God spoke a demand on the earth again. Not a single place. Not one. Not one. The last was when he handed to man. The main man came to the scene and he gave him power. You want, it, you want God to do it, you will demand it. <laughs> and a, an ex-president cannot sign the law when a new one is there. And there can't be two masters on the same boat. So he, he was, he, so when he was giving to man, he was telling man the things that will make you prosper. You know, remember when Moses was handed over to Joshua? He told him the key things in his life. I said, yeah, be strong. You know, this word of this word, study He was giving the principle. That's what God was doing for him. He was telling man, you know, on this earth, you want, to, you want to subdue it. Be fruitful. Be what? Be what? Be fruitful. You want to subdue. Tell your neighbor, say, be, be fruitful. You want to ex- you want to you you want to you, you want to reign. Tell your neighbor say be fruitful. Be fruitful. Say, it, say it again. Say be fruitful. Be fruitful. Okay, let me let, let me use another word to just to um, expose your life again. Like prosperity. Tell your neighbor say like prosperity. Like prosperity. He was telling man, don't be poor. The poor cannot subdue. Because the poor is subdued already. He said he spoke to man. Oh, what do you want to lot of life? Well, I don't know anything that happens. What do you want to do? I mean, I'm just to get a job. You know, get a job. Then you can't subdue. You must prosper. So when he, told to, he spoke to Matthew, be fruitful. Then he told him again, not just to only you prosper, ensure that you have a prosperity network. He says what? Prosperity what? Because if only you prosper, you can't see, you can't see subdue. You can only subdue when you are a network of prosperous, prosperity people. So he said, he said multiply. Uh, are you with me? So it's a gathering of people of substance, people that have means, people that God has smiled on before you can subdue the earth. Are you with me? Am I? Am I? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. If, if you didn't like to work hard before, like this easy. Work hard because you want to subdue. Yes. Work hard because you want some things to improve. He says, replace the earth. means improve the earth. You can't improve anything if you don't have money. <laughs> we're, we're talking about Elon Musk all these great things. Do you know how much he spends on his in, in, uh, investment? How much he spends on research? All the technology you see, this thing is free. Is investment. Nations that have money are the ones that can Invest in technology. Are you with me? So it means that to achieve what God wants you to do, you must be fruitful. Whatever is in your hand must multiply. And it must work to replace the earth. And you must work now, subdue it. Which means the earth will no longer be one control, you will be the one controlling the earth. God told us. That God will raise up men and women that will control the earth. I don't know how many of them are here. I am, I am, I am. But I know I'm one of them. God will raise up men and women that will make significant impact in this our generation. Amen. That history will record this man, this woman, change lives. He did not leave it as he met it. See, see, money without understanding of purpose is waste. Money of buy car to shine is you, you are poor. 
See, you, see, your wealth is no wealth until you understand purpose. Why is the money coming? For what is it to be used for? The man you miss it, you are poor. See, until a nation understands the purpose of the resources God gave to them, they become a waste. But when you know that this resource is given to us to bring education, to bring civilization, to bring improved life, then the wealth of the land makes meaning. Or else, it will just be carried and put in one bank somewhere else and be waiting till you die. And the country there sits on your money. And your child goes, they say, once collect money, they say your fingerprint it does not work. And or he goes with the code the father gave to him. He said, no, this, this is the wrong code. I said, but no, that's the code my father uses. He said, tell him to come out. <laughs> tell him to come and punch it in. Then you know there's a there's problem. They go and bring him to verify. Hi. Then you know, it's easy to put money in the bank. I bet they got to take it out. Why? Understanding purpose. So I'm here to announce to you that God is about to give you the reason why you are in existence. Yeah. Why 2023 could not take you out? Why you are still standing till now? Why in the midst of all the storm up and down, you are still head looking up? It's because God is taking you somewhere. Amen. It doesn't matter the deep waters that you are falling into. It doesn't matter the blows you have received. It doesn't matter everything you are enduring. You are sustained for a time like this. To make history and record and to change destinies and change lives. I'm, who am I speaking to here? Jump on your feet and shout, say, I receive it. There's a call of greatness coming over someone. There's a call. There's a call of greatness. A call of greatness. A call of who shall we send? There's a call of elevation for someone. Yeah. I pray that you will answer that, answer that call. Yeah. You will not be ordinary. Yeah. Compelling vision and dreams God will give to you. Yeah. The dreams to reign in life will be revealed to you. Yeah. In your space, in your mountain, you will be on top. Yeah. I say to you, wherever you are, you will be the light that the kingdom will shine. Amen. I said, wherever you are, you'll be the light of the kingdom that will shine. Amen. I said, wherever you are, you'll be the light of the kingdom that will shine. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Speak to the Lord right now. Say, Lord, send me. This grace, let it rest upon me. Let it rest upon my family. Let this grace of greatness this power, this plan that you have, this great thing that you, are, you have ordained to do. I'm not here by myself. I was talking to Esther. You are, not, you, you are not made queen because you are beautiful. You are made queen a purpose. Daniel, you didn't receive wisdom to be proud. You receive real wisdom. To lead kings. Joseph, you were not just given an excellent spirit because you can interpret dreams. You are given excellent spirit because you are to deliver your nation and your land from perish. For every blessing, every gift God gives a man is for a purpose. The moment you miss the purpose, you have missed, you miss, you, you miss the assignment. I pray you will not miss the purpose of God for your life. Miloso tola paradia sakundi. Milo Kande Reba Shanto Lebos. If you have missed it, God, I'll realign me. If you have lost the vision, lost the dream, oh Lord, realign me back to the purpose of my existence. Take me back to the reason why I'm alive. Make my vision clearer. Don't just seek wealth for wealth purpose. Seek wealth to fulfill purpose, to fulfill destiny. 
You are created for a purpose, for a reason. There's a reason why you are alive. If you are a mother, you are created to impact a new generation. God gave you children to raise champions, to raise men and women that will serve him and know the way of the Lord. That is your purpose. Masokala prondo sotola. Lepa, you will not fail in your purpose. Lepa ragadianda rebos. You are a father. You are the image that they are to follow. God, make me an example of glory. Make me an example. Ma leprato sekete. Lento la baraga dianus. Yekete. You are young because God has put strength in you. Strength of the, of the new age. Strength to do, to do exploits. Strength to be strong. You are strong not just because you are, you are strong to be tough. You are strong because you are to do the things to be done in this age, in this generation, things to be done. God is looking. Who are the people that will do it? Who are the young people with life, with, with strength, that will do the new assignment? Malakatia. Oh Lord, strengthen me to do, to do great things. Strengthen me to do great things. Malo paragedila gada. Letele gadia. A life without purpose is empty. Masokola Pashandos. Melia Dorabas Kalaba. Lekete, you have said 2024 is our year to do. No sitting down. No looking and sleeping. It's a year of hard work. A year of, of projects. A year of visions. A year of fulfilling visions. A year of impact. Mela Parados Kiliandos. Marota Sikata. Melia Tora Bakende Levosh. Mila Rodo Sotolaba. Lekende Le Bradoska. Ala Paronde Sente Le Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Masa Kole Prato Setelia. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. All I see close. You can't do exploits if you don't know Jesus Christ. You can't do exploits until you know him. This day that do know, there's the knowing. You must know him first. You must know him. You must know him. If you are here, you have not got to that place where you can say, I know him. No, no, I've heard about him. No, no, I've heard his name, but I know him. No, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, Please don't enter 2024 without knowing him. Because 2024 is a year for those that know him. If you don't know him, you miss the possibilities of God for the year. You must know him. If you want to know Jesus, first you need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Because you can't walk with God with iniquity in your life. You must drop sin. And you must make a new, begin, a new turn, a new beginning to face him. If you are here, you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and be your Lord and, your, and you want to be faithful to him, join me and pray this prayer. And I shall pray this prayer as a sign where you want God to enter. I believe the heart is where he enters. He arrests your heart. He arrests your heart. He takes control. Don't put your hand on your chest. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you want to, say, Jesus, save me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you. I want to know you. I want to know you. Forgive me of all my sins. Everything I've done wrong. Walking against you, talking against you, rebelling against you. Lord, forgive me. I repent of my sin. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing me and for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Church, shout a big amen. amen. And please kindly have your seat. If you pray that prayer, something big has happened in your life. Yeah, church, we have put our hands together for those that pray that prayer. And if you pray from home, online, please, we're celebrating you also 
send me a message on, this, on the email address that will be on the screen and the um, text number that will be there. Please send it to me. Say, I gave my life to Christ on the 31st of December. And we want to follow you up and just and pray along with you. And believe that your salvation is permanent in Jesus' name. And if you have prayed that prayer on site, I believe a card will be given to you. Even if a card is not given to you, and you know you prayed that prayer, just want to have record and just um, get to know you. I, will, I also be praying along with you. On my left hand, you see a pastor at the door, moving his hand. Please just go to the direction. I just will direct you. Just to feel the car in your back. And church, please just celebrate them. They are our brothers, our sisters in the Lord. Just celebrate them as they go. For answering the call of salvation. I think we can do, we can do better than that. Just encourage them as clap. A clap offering. A clap offering. A clap offering. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Church, keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name. Let's all shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout exploits. Hallelujah.